Landing then, Donald? <laughs> Come on, you're a long time dead in that office next to his. <laughs> anyway, you did get a suntan. Uh, the same as we had before. Champagne. Uh, mine's a scotch, actually. Yes. He means well, Mr. Henderson. He's done nothing but gloat all the way from Beirut. <laughs> well, he thinks that he has reason. My London hotel, <laughs> should you or Sir Don wish to contact me. I thought we were non-starters. In your present colours, yes. I take it that Sir John has been advised. Oh, very probably. Yeah. Mind you, I'm not fishing. It's just that his reputation is such that one can't help speculating on the reception that he will give you and Kenneth. Well, he won't have laid on a banquet. <laughs> anyway, as we can't have it, I'd assume you got the contract as anybody, Frank. Congratulations. Never could stand a good loser. <laughs> Wilder would never congratulate his betters. Oh, not better, Frank. Uh, just this time, luckier. Politics isn't luck. Next time it'll be you coming back empty-handed. What? In competition with Blythe? With me. Out there? Anyway, I did all right at the casino. Champagne, just uh, Our Donald did all right at the casino, too, and look at him. Like a sheikh whose harem's been nationalized. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoying your flight, sir? Well, I am. Uh, mine's a scotch, please. Thank you. Go on, Sam. Thank you. Have you told Wilder yet? Does he know? Oh, you stick to Infel's business, I'll stick to Bly's. Sir John, you can be sure we'll be sticking to that of the National Export Board. Well, lying for the one hour back, he'll be there now. I'll say it again. In almost a year since we came into being, nobody, I repeat nobody, on either side of industry has refused to cooperate with this board. Somebody will. When and if anybody does, then of course we should have to consider whether we ask for greater powers. You're on record, Caswell, saying nothing and no one will be allowed to obstruct the work of this board. In the national interest, you said. I am in no hurry, gentlemen. Oh, unless it be for luncheon. With Sir John and Mr. Ferguson so concerned about individual freedom, I, I release you all. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. You can't wait for someone to defy this board. Oh, he'll find his space dog soon enough. Don't you encourage him. Sir John's League of Tolerance is a new member. Well, Mr. Ferguson's always been against extra powers. Not for his own union. He was so quiet about kangaroo courts, I thought he'd emigrated to Australia. Are you free for lunch, Miss Weldon? Well, I'm on a diet. Oh, promotion boards don't study figures. Certainly not yours. Um, I know you've been lobbying. I thought we might discuss um, how I could help. Thank you. You sounded so convincing, Fergie, when I almost believed you. I'll see you Monday then, John. Electronics Committee. Mr. Chairman. Bye, Fergie. You must be desperate for allies, John. No. Only for my lunch. We might have pursued this matter further back at the office, if only you as chairman of the National Export Board were required not to take any more particular part in the, the affairs of Black Construction Limited. Count yourself lucky, John. 
If I weren't so restricted, I should demand an explanation on behalf of the company of Bly's failure to land this um, Arab contract. It was on a plate. I'll ask your son as a family matter. He's due back any moment, no doubt with his usual excuses. <laughs> You'll be needing those. I should have known better than to send Henderson with him. He's nothing to learn from Kenneth. You know, John, I'd give anything to be back on Bly's board when this gets out. Five minutes, Miss Weldon. Your chairman's very bouncy today. Our chairman, Sir John. Why? I've no idea. We uh, could down tonight. What if I'm to get through? It's all work nowadays, isn't it? Or are you dining with one or other of your new treasury friends? It's work. And from choice, Sir John. Well, it's spoiling you. Donald, you can blame it all on me. <laughs> Sir John will be most touched. <laughs> now I know humanity started under a stone. Ah, he's a high flyer, Don. Country needs him. And if that's success, I'm proud to be a flop. And if you're thinking what I think you are, you're dead wrong. Not him and Pamela. I thought all that was over. I was never on. I trust your loyalty to John didn't lead you to cable him from Beirut. Much better to break it to him gently. For a man who's just had a four million quid contract lifted from under his nose, your morale's a bit hard to take. Ah, breeding, Don. Breeding and education. Ken, you just can't wait until tomorrow morning, can you? Uh, yes, all right, Father. 4.30 at the club. N no, no, no. No, that's fine. John's here now, actually. <laughs> yes. Goodbye. Sorry, John. Uh, he called me. No doubt from a public call box. Caswell's so keen to convince his political bosses that he's renounced all his business commitments that he's become a white old joke. He'll be asking you to meet him at the lockers in Euston Station next, or the monkey house. Uh, sorry. Hello, Don. John. And there's no need to say anything. You did have a trying time. Next time you can go solo without benefit of joint managing director. All right, Kenneth, you explain. None of your usual limp excuses. The facts, plain and simple, without any flimflam. And then perhaps you'll explain why Don and I should be expected to endure the humiliations we have because of you. Oh, for heaven's sake, get it up with it. We missed out because we are now, as a company, on the Arab blacklist. Hmm? And there we stay, as long as you're with Blyes. They've uh, raked up something about your selling aircraft spare parts while we were still at Scott Furlong to the Israelis. Of course, if it's untrue. Don't be so bloody patronizing, Kenneth. Who put them onto it, Don? Oh, Hagadan could have. They suddenly knew enough about it. Well, who put them onto it? It's irrelevant. You traded with Israel, and that's a crime in Arab eyes. And it'll cost us millions. Unless... Unless what? Oh, I must be pragmatic, John. Unless we now, or the board later, and they must be informed as a matter of urgency, remove the cause of the Arabs' annoyance. You should have kept the sun off the back of your head. Why don't you run along and report to Daddy? Oh, he knows. I called him from Beirut last night. Uh, somehow I thought you had. Think it over, John. I'm sure you'd be the last to want this company's fingers left out of the Middle East pie. And what kept you from the telephone? Well, it was his mission. And yours. He told you not to call me, hmm? We discussed it. I see. No, you don't, John. Look, I'm a director of Bly's and the messenger boy days are over and you've got to understand that. And you've got to choose sides. What if you want to dig into this Arab thing? The man you want came back with us. He's in London. He came back with Hagadan. He seemed rather set on meeting you. Yes? Lady Wilder is here, Sir John. Oh, yes. All right. Thank you. John! Hello, Pamela. My camel just got in. <laughs> I hope you haven't been corrupting Kenneth on Baccarat and belly dancers. Oh, we saw the fat Arabs and poker-faced Lebanese. Counting their fiestas. Losing count. 
I seem to be intruding. We were going to look at Jade. Oh, yes. Um, Don is very keen on Jade, aren't you, Don? Oh, yes, yes. Beirut's full of it. Freeport, all those crafty Phoenicians looting red China. And red, white and blue Hong Kong. <laughs> well, if you can manage to be back by six, Don. Screw up your eyes and be my oriental advisor. We'll worry the lives out of those dealers from Paris and New York. Oh, I'm not sure I can face an auction. Well, that's not until Monday. Today we just press our noses up against the glass panes. Miss Lingard? Yes, Sir John? I want Claridge's, one of their Arab guests, a Mr. Farid Salim. Salim? Yes, that's right. Thank you. Yes, Sir John. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Go easy on the hubble bubble. Having the Arabs against him could make him popular in some quarters. Now, the wilders of this world are paid to keep themselves and their companies off political blacklists. <laughs> I see you've been doing your homework. Wilder will try and keep it dark. And I don't trust the board of Blyes to switch on the lights, so scared of him. I knew how it'd be when I left. <laughs> you knew how it'd be when you appointed that rubber stamp chorus. Mm, they grovel to you, now it's to Wilder. Your turn will come again. National Export Board is a better bet. Hmm? The NEB, Father. Your board. When I mean, it's time, in the national interest, that you looked into loss of trade caused by the Arab blacklist. Of course, if you're afraid of the foreign office. <laughs> We're not afraid of anybody. Good. Then set up your Arab blacklist committee. Call Wilder as a witness. Brandy, sir. Uh, let me think about it. Uh, yes, please. Uh, brandy can? Yes, please. And a cigar. <laughs> what do you think, Don? Examine it carefully as if you knew where to find the flaws and look as if you've served several years east of Suez. <laughs> it's all a game, really. It really makes me nervous. John would like that. I thought it was your game. He's got beginner's itch. And luck. Oh. It was broody today. Yeah, caught in a sandstorm. Who's Salim? I thought you quarantined yourself from John's business. <laughs> I'm an inquisitive animal, Dom. John's on about desert rats. I wouldn't like him to blame the innocent for what you haven't been able to grab out there. You mean Hagadan? I don't mean Lawrence of Arabia. You know, that buffalo is the only thing I really want. I think I'll try for it on Monday. I don't think that buffalo is worth a penny over 4,000, do you, Don? Of course, you're the expert. If names can be put upon a list, they can equally well be taken off. It all boils down to a matter of price. And you want to negotiate? Don't you? The Arab has feelings, Sir John. And the Englishman, no monopoly of integrity. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, my secretary will see you out. You know, I did not come here to negotiate your removal from the list. And you didn't give Henderson your card as a souvenir. Good day, Mr. Salim. Nor did I give him this. I, I could leave it, if you wish to negotiate. Details of a company, Sir John, in which you might with advantage take an interest. And in which you already have one. Oh, its future certainly looks brighter than uh, past performance may suggest. Rashid Amara Limited, registered in London, headquarters in Beirut. A construction company, with a name that is not only old established, but as Arabic as the pyramids. And we would be able to deal through them? By buying control, but discreetly, of course. Your name would have to be concealed. <laughs> Nothing but an empty shell. Oh, it is your overcoat, Sir John. The wind in the desert blows cold. How much is it worth? To you, whatever value you place on future contracts in the Arab world, you will find it's quoted on the stock exchange. 
Naturally, I would expect to be advised before you buy. Also, you would have first call on my services as a consultant at a fee to be agreed. I've heard of men in your part of the world having their hands chopped off for stealing pennies. You abolished hanging, Sir John. We did away with amputation. Human progress is universal. I take it you agree that the sooner someone refuses to give evidence to this board, the better. Well, it would undoubtedly clear the air, and it would underline our need for extra powers. I'm glad you think so, because it could happen quite soon. Is there any way that the first refusal should come from a member of our own board? Still, it would be good for publicity. I suppose you know who I'm talking about. Now, Miss Weldon, how soon can we set up a committee of the full board to inquire into the Arab blacklist? Well, the board's already at full stretch, Mr. Brown. How soon? Well, possibly a month. Too long. Look into it, Miss Weldon. Let me have a realistic appraisal tomorrow. I needn't remind you of the need for complete discretion. No, Mr. Bly, you needn't. Let me have the figures. Yes, now. Come in. Oh, I'm sorry, Sherlock. Uh, yes, I'll hold on. Uh, what is it, Miss Weldon? Mr. Bly, that committee for the Arab blacklist will have to wait at least a month. I thought I made it clear last night it was urgent. Well, so you did, Mr. Bly, but don't forget that 13 of our members are part-time. They're not on this board to be feather-bedded. Don't think I'm not aware of the extra strains you're taking, Miss Weldon. And I'm not exactly standing still over your promotion to principal. Yes? Who's sit down. Uh, 14,320. Export duty free therein. Good. Fine. Bye. Now, can't we get this board meeting earlier, Miss Weldon? No, Mr. Bly, we can't. Reasons? Or members' commitments to other committees. I want one meeting to hear one witness. He doesn't know, I take it. I beg your pardon? Sir John. I have no idea, Mr. Bly. Give me a date, then. Well, the earliest possible date is three weeks on Thursday. Mm. What about Monday of that week? Well, that's the electronics committee. Yes? Mr. Kenneth Bly is here. Let him pass. All right, then, three weeks on Thursday. Let me have a draft of the agenda this afternoon. Well, I'll have to check members' availability first. Thank you, Miss Weldon. Come in, Ken. Morning, Miss Weldon. Morning. I heard that. Let him pass. You're getting delusions of grandeur. <laughs> it's the day. Oh, well, I find it damn cold. I walked through St. James's Park this morning. Ah, oh, you can have Paris in the spring. Give me London at any time. You've trodden somebody into the ground, I can see. It's the only time you know his trees are the smell of flowers. <laughs> what do you want, Ken? Your help in seeing that enough members of Bly's board take the best chance yet to dish Wilder. I dined Salim last night. There's a chance we could have a piece of that contract after all. If we remove Wilder and go in with infills and cross Mr. Salim's palm with gold. Well, it's a little more complicated than that. Wilder's not to be shifted that way. And while he's at Bly's, you can forget any joint ventures with infants. Or should we call it Hagadans now? And you know, Mr. Salim's too greedy. Forget this contract, Ken. Forget it. Listen, Father, we, we could topple Wilder this time. <laughs> you mean you think you could? Stop fancying yourself, Ken, and get on with your work. I mean, Wilder's yours. Your kill. You know, if you thought less about big game hunting and more about those juicy jobs in Africa... Now, look, Father. You didn't want us wasting our time in Africa, you said. Let the Americans and the Russians bleed themselves to death in Africa, you said. And I said something else. Forget this contract, I said. Yes? Oh, all right, um... Cancel the call to Sir John Wilder, would you? Come in. And would you get me Mr. Bruce Murray at the Treasury, please? Oh, leave those, Betty, would you? I thought you wanted to take notes as you went through them. Oh, later on, Betty, about four o'clock. Yes. Oh, Bruce, could we talk? Yes, now. 
Uh, no, usual place. Yes. Look at that little lot. With a board of directors like that, it's a wonder that Salim's company hasn't sunk without trace in the eastern Mediterranean. Oh. Hardly the uh, in crowd. In? Two hereditary peers, an ex-civil servant, dead from the neck upwards, three old school layabouts, and a desert army relic who probably thinks that Monty is still attacking Tobruk. Salim's obviously trying it on. Mm. But of course, with a different board. Miss Lingard? Yes, Sir John? You can put those phone calls so as soon as you like now. Yes, Sir John. No, no, you better stay, Don. You never know. You might be managing director of Sardin's company one of these days. It would be better, wouldn't it? Better? Move. Treasury, the Board of Trade. Where would you run to from there? I'm not running, Bruce. If I were a male civil servant, I'd merely be transferring in my own interest. And all too obviously, you're a female civil servant who's made the usual mistake of getting herself involved emotionally. Emotion is just plain common or garden distaste for his methods. You'll find Caswell Vlies wherever you run to in Whitehall. If your chairman wants to crucify Wilder, it's no part of your function to mislay the cross. I just don't look. It's a 20th century disease. Monkey sickness. Hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. Do nothing. I could resign. For Wilder? Would he for you? Oh, lies, of course. Testing me out with confidences he hardly expects me to pass on to John. He needs loyal officials. A few days ago, right here, you were saying you were all out for promotion. Principal. Prospect one day. Eight, ten years ahead of running the NEB. You can do that and still remain a woman, I think. You can't remain the woman of someone involved with the board. No, 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 Tony. All I need to know now is whether you'd be interested or not. Right. I ask you to stay down. Not as a one-man captive audience. Oh, I've no objection to an extramural course in escapology. But as a director of Blythe's, who, when it's all over, will draw his own conclusions. Now, ask Salim out to dinner. Find him the best kebab in London and tell him all you know at a price. If he doesn't have to buy it, he'll assume that it's worthless. So, make him pay for everything you know. I'm sorry, John. Cash. Money. Sterling. You mean really? Well, how much? What'll I do with it? Look, you negotiate a price, and if you don't know what to do with it, you shouldn't be on any board of mine. Put it on a treble, for heaven's sake. Buy a new car. Put it into jail. Yes? Lady Wilder is on the other line, Sir John. And Mr. Salim has been on twice. He asked if you would call him back as soon as possible, as he has to go out. Well, tell Mr. Salim that I'm very, very busy. And, uh, put Lady Wilder on, will you please? Uh, yes, Sir John. Pamela, have you heard anything of Neil Palmer lately? Well, the last communique was that he was writing a book on Arabia. Ah. Well, we shall be giving a dinner party tomorrow night. I shall expect him to be there. Supposing I were to say that I have a pressing engagement? Well, unpress it. Goodbye. You're invited as well, Doc. Oh, thanks, but what do I tell Sal? You tell him anything. I'm obviously rounding up people whose names you will remember to join a company to take care of Bly's interests in the Middle East. Well, and he'll pay to know that. He'll pay. Before long, he'll pay to know what I had for lunch. Uh, Kenneth might uh, like to be kept informed, too. He won't pay for the information, of course, but... Uh, you might give it to him as an act of charity and out of sense duty as a director of Bly Construction Limited. Oh, damn! 
Can't anyone watch Wilder now I'm no longer at Bly's? I'm sorry. This lot round him, Wilder's hardly any need to take cover. How does he get Palmer, for heaven's sake? The Arabs' favourite British diplomat. Ex-diplomat. And Curtis. How the hell does he get Curtis? Oh, isn't he the wonder boy on desalination? Yes, he can name his price anywhere in the Gulf. You say Henderson came to you with all this off his own bat? He's beginning to see the light. And Salim. How long can you hold him off completing the deal? Well, now he knows that Wilder's fairly committed, he'd be stupid to hold off. Three weeks? Oh, I doubt it. We might make him a better offer. Miss Weldon? Yes, Mr. Clark? I want that Board of Inquiry fixed definitely for three weeks on Thursday. Very well, Mr. Clark. But I, I imagine, Sir John, that um, you'll be making certain board changes when... if you take over the company. Naturally. Uh, have you anyone particular in mind? Oh, you don't expect me to name names. <laughs> no, uh, I hear the names are very impressive. I take it, though, Sir John, that I will be hearing from you very soon. Oh, yes, one way or the other. Only, there was a rise, small but maybe significant, in Rashid Amara's shares today. Shares that haven't moved for months. I, I don't know who could be buying them. Nor do I. The point is, Sir John, that the more they rise now, the more I will have to pay for any shares I want in the company. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry that I cannot be more specific. Mm. But it must be perfectly clear to you that I intend not to be kept out of any contracts in your part of the world. Ah, and a nod is as good as a wink, eh? Mm. <laughs> as soon as I know anything, I shall be in touch with you by telephone. Thank you, Sir John, thank you. Goodbye. Mm. Goodbye, Sir John. Miss Lingard. Yes, Sir John? Is my stockbroker on the phone? Yes, he's waiting. Alec, I want you to buy another package of Rashid Amara Limited. Yes, about 500. Uh, uh, not enough to make the price raise significantly. Uh, oh, yes, of course I know what I'm doing. Buy them, Alec. Better than going into the House of Lords. Only if the air conditioning works. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, excuse me, will yes. you? Yes. You decided to come in, or are you still wondering whether to buy a ticket or not? Hello, family. Anyone I know? Oh, Sir Gordon Money. <laughs> One merchant banker and the eighth army. I'm afraid I never got my knees brown. <laughs> Couldn't John get hold of Monty and the three wise men? Well, I don't know about Monty, but the place is stuffed with wise men. Hello, Don, come in. How's your wallet? Did Salim pay you well? He ought to have done for the amount of information you gave him. He's here? <laughs> no, no doubt. He's fiddling with his prayer beads and counting his likely capital gain. Yeah, so, John, this came for you as I left the office. Special delivery. I uh, didn't know the NEB worked that late. Get Pamela to introduce you. <laughs> Susan, what the hell is all this about? This inquiry into the Arab blacklist. I know the rules. There is nothing to stop a member of the board giving evidence to that board. Or aren't you interested in seeing if there is? Things have changed, Susan, haven't they? For me? Darling, they had to. And where now? Where do you think it's going to lead? You'll still be a civil servant in 50 years' time. Don't worry about me, John. It's a bit late to start that. Oh, you may have a bigger carpet and a coat stand and a 
Lots of cringing, pinstripe nonentities fawning about you. Is that what you're settling for now? At your age? I'm settling for self-respect, John. I wish I could help. You could explain why I only heard last night in a federal summons to give evidence. It could only have come from me and Caswell would have known it. He was half expecting it anyway. You weighed the risk? I've learned to weigh everything, John. I'll leave you. I'll walk back to the office. I think the exercise after that Chateau Briand. I enjoy the lunch, John, despite the inquisition. Goodbye, Susan. It would be indisposed, John. I am not in the sick leave business. Goodbye. If somebody refused the board before you, there would be no point in Caswell pursuing the matter, would there? I mean, the storm would come too soon and, and in the wrong place. If? There could well be someone, John. Visit, wait here. I'll be back in about 20 minutes. secret that he's due to appear on the electronics committee. After all, you, you're on it. And does he object? He has very strong views on inquisitive governments. Why don't you treat him to a Chateaubriand? There is one snag, though. He's not due to appear until after your meeting with the Arab Committee. He could probably be brought forward as one of the witnesses for next Monday's meeting. If he's agreeable. Who's handling the timetable for that committee? I am. You don't happen to have brought any bread with you, do you? Next time I bring fresh herrings and caviar. You're worried, Frank, aren't you? That if you do defy the board, you'll become the ministers and Caswell's whipping boy. Now, look, John, if they've put you up to warn me off, you know what they can do. And uh, not to mention you. So you are thinking of defying them? I might be in. There's a copy of my note to Caswell about extra powers. You'll see that I'm opposed. Now, Caswell needs somebody to oppose the board in order to make his point about extra powers. So if you're thinking of sticking to your principles... I'll listen to my lawyer and my PR man. What I'm saying, Frank, is if you are going to rebel, do it with a gun in your hand. Oh, I'm not in the habit of sitting down to protest, John. I mean, that way they step on you. One of our weaknesses at the NEB is that information given in confidence could leak to one of the witnesses' competitors. I've gone into that. There's no proof that it's happened yet. If you should do decide to defy the board, it would be feasible that you could receive information given by one of your competitors. Carvers, for instance. What, guaranteed authentic? Mm. But not in writing. Mm. I'll sleep on it, John. Ah. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that you put old Caswell's nose out of joint, eh? Well, he's got that kind of a nose. Bye, John. Goodbye, Frank. Doc! Miss Lingard. Yes, Sir John. I want the latest share price, please. Yes, Sir John. Your friend Salim will almost certainly be ferreting around here shortly. I want you to keep him out of here till he bears his teeth. 
You wouldn't like me to strap into a chair and bolt the door, I suppose? No. Not unless it would make you feel a little bit insecure. Yes? The price moved up 25% in the last hour, Sir John. Good, thank you. And would you get my broker on the phone, please? Yes, Sir John. You're beginning to worry me, Don. You're not enjoying life as you should. I have no intention of being pushed back, John, by you or by anyone into the role of messenger boy. Or keeper of the royal ferrets. Or that. <laughs> I like that, Don. It shows a proper spirit of rebellion. That's what this country needs. More rebels. People who will stand up and say, go to hell. Yes? Mr. Levington for you, Sir John. On two. Thank you very much. Alec, those shares, Rashid Amara Limited, I want you to sell them. Yes, the whole lot. Now. Good. Goodbye. Saville. Yes, Sir John. I want you to put out a press statement, something to this effect. Neither Bly Construction Limited or I myself are interested in any way in taking over Rashid Amara Limited. Any rumours circulating to the contrary are entirely without foundation in fact. Now brush that up and read it over to me before you put it out. Got that? Yes. Might be a hazard occupation being keeper of the ferrets, Donald. Salim has been buying Rashid Amara. Well, spare your grief. He'd cut your hands off at the wrist for a small profit. No, it's not him I'm grieving for. Um, look, John, would you excuse me for a jiffy? I... Oh, no, Don. Not you. How much? Oh, just a dabble, you know, a thousand or so. Shares or sterling? Sterling. Well, you better be quick. You might save a bit if you hurry. <laughs> Rashid Amara's are well down on their original price. Look, get rid of them all. I don't need to be told it's a substantial loss. Get rid of them! Oh, come in, Kenneth. Well, make your protest and I'm done with it. And uh, don't be alarmed by any noise next door. It's probably Don restraining Salim from throwing himself out of the window. I hope you weren't tempted to speculate. Knowing you were involved, I wouldn't have touched them with a ten-foot pole. And we don't like it. We? The Board of Blyes, in case you'd forgotten we exist. Oh, you mean Caswell? I mean Blyes! I've just spoken to every member of the Board on the telephone. Yeah, sounds like the last round-up. We can still save face, including yours. Well, thank you for your concern, but my face isn't even real. We can have a piece of this Arab contract and not be blacked for others in the future. Through infels. Now I know you shall be back at school. Good day, Kenneth. Put your paper shield away, Wilder. I'm offering you a way out. Which you're going to need. You may be out in the Arab world, Wilder, but I won't allow this company to be. There's too much going on there. You! You uh, won't allow us to be kept out. What the hell do you think this is? Look at it. Go on, look at it. Every civil engineering job projected throughout Arabia, throughout the Middle East, and we're going to get our share of it. So go home, dig your garden, paper a wall, play with your model railway, anything. You're huffing and puffing, Wilder. <laughs> paper dreams. We're ready to talk facts. You know, the real world. This we, Hagadan and I. There's the phone. Ring him, tell him to go to hell. Oh, he's here downstairs, waiting in his car. You can't hold it against him forever. Miss Lingard. Yes, Sir John? There's a Rolls Royce trespassing on the forecourt. Mr. Hagadan's. Tell the commissioners I want it and its contents removed immediately, and there is no need for diplomacy. Very well, Sir John. And next time you bring your playmates round, make sure they're welcome. You'd better hold yourself ready for an emergency board meeting. Any time you like. I'm usually here. And not for long. You drag Bly's name through the mud once too often. Don't you mean through the sand, Caswell? And aren't you tempting fate by even turning up here? 
I thought as chairman of the National Export Board that you'd renounced all your interest in business. The minister is certainly under that impression. Leave us, Ken. No, Father, this is my business. I'm staying. Don't see any sign of your car, Caswell. Did you come by bus? Thank you very much. All right, Baker. You heard what the man said. Let's go. Well, so much for Mr. Haggardan. It's up to you, John. You can resign now in the firm's interest, in which case you shall with some goodwill, or be kicked out by unanimous decision of the board. You have till next Thursday. Ah, oh, yes, I forgot. I appear before the National Export Board and abjectly confess my failure to beat the blacklist, in which case I'm a lousy businessman. Or I refuse to help the board, of which I'm a member, in which case I'm an unpatriotic humbug. And the board of Blyes will meet the same evening to fire you. That's about it, John. Mm. Oh, dear. You are in cuckoo land. Donald. Yes, John. I can see Mr. Salim now. Oh, do come in, Mr. Well, Sarin. Uh, you will know Mr. Kenneth Bly. Well, nice <coughs> you again. what I have to say to you is private. What you have to say to me is either yes or no. We are not interested in your speculative losses on the London Stock Exchange. Now, look here. And we are not buying Rashid Amara. We are forming our own new company to deal with our interests in the Middle East. The sort of company whose board carries more political weight than you've ever dreamt of in your greediest dreams. I know who you've got on your board. Look, you gave me your word. I wouldn't give you a glass of water. You can put your contact service at the disposal of the new company on a consulted basis with payment by results. Or, or, or you can take what's coming to you from your own people when they know what you've been up to over here. You are already discredited, Wilder. But the new board's company isn't, and any one of those could Topple you by wagging their little finger in the right direction. Yes, but it's still you behind the and company. Your friends won't even notice that. They'll only see the men out in front. So give me your answer by Monday. Um, oh. oh, we still haven't got this contract. And we still haven't approved this company of yours. You're whistling in the dark, Wilder. Mm. You wait until after the NEB hearing on Thursday. Don't you worry about the hearing on Thursday. You just put a little ring round Monday. Every couple of weeks. Yeah. Frank Howard? Yes, of, of Howard Electronics. He wasn't due to appear until next week. I thought he was being difficult. Well, yes, he was, but he telephoned to say he'd like to get it over with. He has to go abroad tomorrow. Oh, very well. Let's get on with it. Well, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Gentlemen, if you'd like to look at your agenda, you'll see we have an addition. Mr. Frank Howarth of Howarth Electronics um, has requested that he give his information today rather than next week, as he has an important sales tour abroad. Would you ask Mr. Howarth to come in, please? Mr. <coughs> oh, come in, Mr. Howarth. Make yourself at home. We're uh, very informal here. You can uh, read your evidence if you like. Well, I'm not here to say anything, Mr. Chairman. You have the powers of a royal commission. The law says I have to attend. It says nothing about what I do when I get here. I've got nothing to say to you at all. I'm sure you're aware of the consequences. I've taken advice. You're setting a precedent, Mr. Hearth. For the first person who's refused to cooperate. But not the last. If you'll have a look at this, Mr. Chairman. Information given in evidence to this board by one of my competitors. Oh, it's, it's of no uh, competitive value to me, as it happens. But how am I to know that future leaks will be as harmless? Good afternoon, gentlemen. 
now I suppose you'll get your extra powers, Caswell. Ultimately. But until you do, these hearings are a complete farce. In view of what's happened, I think we'd better adjourn for ten minutes. Five thousand guineas, I'm bid. Five thousand guineas. Five thousand guineas. Five thousand two hundred. Five thousand five hundred. Five thousand five hundred. Pretend we never came. John said not to go over five. Five thousand five hundred, then. I wish you'd stop looking at me. Something ought to be done about the French. For the last time. Five thousand five hundred. Six thousand, sir. Six thousand at the bet. Six thousand guineas, then. For the last time. Six thousand guineas. Six thousand guineas to John Wilder. Is a victory role. Who's he shot down today? Me, for one. Lot number 71. 19th century.